First of all, introducing our challenger. The enemy of the Lua Corner. He's going to step in and he does the ball over. Let's bring on the boom. This is Eternal MMA. Right, everyone, welcome back, and thank you for joining us here once again on another edition of the Eternal Insiders Podcast, powered by Fight HQ, the official uniform partner for Eternal MMA. And with that, let us welcome in an absolute staple of the Australian mixed martial arts scene for a number of years. In 2021, he hung up the gloves after a 19-fight pro career, 11 of which he had victories in, eight of those by way of finish. And uh, with that, one of the slickest highlight reels in the country to go along with it. Kept himself close to the game by focusing on bringing through the new generation of fighters on the Gold Coast as a full-time coach at his gym in CMBT. And next weekend, we see the competitive return of the man himself. When he makes the walk as one half of the main event for Eternal 90, you know who it is, Brenton Mumford. Absolute pleasure to have you here on the show, man. Cannot wait to have you back in the cage. I'm going to talk all about it. How are things with you, man? I know it's a busy schedule for you in the lead-up to this, so uh, grateful to have you here to talk about it. No, it's been good. It's been... uh... Had uh yeah, I was, just, I was keen to get back, get back in there. I was uh, I hung them up with some injuries, outside of fighting, life drama. <laughs> um, it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. And then as I focused uh, my energy and time into coaching, a lot more doors opened up, a lot more freedom, freedom to train, living close to the gym. Before, when I retired originally, a lot of it was to do with just uh, was it, uh to be honest, most of it was outside noise. Um, the body was broken down a bit. I had tore my, tore my PCL and my ACL. And then, um, I was, oh, I'd partly tore it. And then obviously I fully tore it when I was uh, in Vegas with Volk for his camp for year Rodriguez first day in Vegas, trying to defend a single leg and jumped and landed on it and just blew it right out. So I was already like, that was obviously after I retired, I was still helping Volk and that and still training a lot. So I still didn't really stop training. I just started, there was a lot of outside noise. And then I um, had an opportunity to work at the gym at CMBT full-time. Miles and Cell gave me the opportunity to coach there full-time, which I made the move up, uh, up the Gold Coast from uh, Northern New South Wales. And then I was living only like five minutes from the gym. So I was basically living in the gym anyways. So I was training like I was still fighting the whole time. Um, and then it just, I kind of got the itch again. I was like, you know what? I'm still going all right at Spiron. I'm still wrestling. I'm still doing everything the same. I'm coaching. But not having to travel. I was doing when I was competing before I retired, I was doing I was driving from Lismore to Southside in Brisbane. Then I was drive to CMBT and back. It was about I was doing about fifteen hundred kilometers a week. And then like daylight savings, like you finish training at six at night, at seven in New South Wales. By the time I got back, I owned a gym in New South Wales as well. Start I'd open that at four thirty, four forty five in the morning. You know what I mean? So I just wasn't I just wasn't doing it. I just wasn't working. So then uh, once I moved up here, I had so much time. I was like, you know what? It's, it's, everything's, all the stars are realigning again. So, and then uh, they put it to me. They were like, oh, Dave keeps missing weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm never going back to lightweight. Trust me, I'm way too big to go back to lightweight God, now. God, no. Um, so then they're like, you know what? What about Martinez at 77? I was like, oh, sweet, if he wants to do it. Like, you know, there's no animosity there or nothing. Like, Dave's a legend. Dave's come down and trained with me and stuff. I trained with him down in Wollongong. You know, I've trained. He come down and trained at CMBT. I've had we trained together, sparred together, grappled everything. So there's zero animosity there. It's just a matter of fact. Like he needed an opponent. He's gone up weight class. I was gonna. I was happy to come back and fight again. I wasn't gonna come back and fight some young up and coming kid because I've. You know, I've got no. I have no desire to. You know, the UFC dream is gone. That's long gone. That was. That was when I was younger. Uh, so I don't have any of those. Uh, that, that pressure on top to, you know, what if I lose, if I win, there's a, it's a stepping stone, you know. Now it's like, you know what, I just love fighting. I, I love competing. I love training. I love coaching. The opportunity was there. Dave's name was there. And I was like, fuck, we're, he beat me last time. You know, it was a good scrap. I was having it my way on the feet. He had his way on the ground. He come he come away with the victory. And, you know, like, it is what it is many years ago. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, the opportunity come up again. I was like, fuck yeah, that's it. I'll I'll take that fight again. And I said it's, it's it's when there's no outside noise, there's no animosity, there's no this is a this is a fight to take you to the next level. It's like, no, nah, this is just a fight to have fun. You know, we're we're gonna have fun in there. There's no, you know, like you're gonna if someone gets a hand raised at the end, 
we'll shake hands, we'll have a laugh, and then it'll be done. And that's, I think, where I'm at in my life. That's perfect for me. I love it, man. I mean, I had like so many questions about uh, a lot of things you just said that just answered so many of those things perfectly. But just in terms of this being uh, your return after three years of competition, I think it was actually, it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I think this week was exactly three years um, since your last fight, uh, which is crazy that it's sort of lined up like that. And you just talk about sort of getting the itch to come back. Like how do you kind of recall kind of how long it's been since you've kind of had that itch to come back? Like since you sort of got on top of the injuries and everything, is it just like, did the opportunity get presented to you and you're like, oh, fuck, I'll just sort of take it? Or, or have you been kind of getting that kind of... That nah, of- so I won't say too much on here to put my foot in it, but I've had, this, uh, like I said, there was a lot of outside noise. There's a lot of things outside of fighting, which, was, which you know, that was, that was it was it was definitely uh, consuming more of my energy than it needed to, that it, that it warranted and that it deserved. Um, outside of the traveling and stuff, like... You know, all I can as a message to young fighters, if your goal is to make it in the sport, you have to have someone in your corner supporting you. You cannot have someone there that's putting the brakes on for you, that's making your life harder than what it needs to be. Because the rest of the shit comes crumbling down around you, and then that outside noise will ruin your career. So if a message from an older fighter that's been through it, you know, if there's something, if there's a thing that's getting in the way, get rid of it because, you know, the, the opportunities will be there and then it'll come back around and, and something better will be in, in on the horizon. But if you just bury yourself down and, and put all your energy or a part of your energy into the problem, try maybe solving the problem, maybe there isn't a solution to the problem. Maybe the solution is to not have the problem in, around anymore. Okay. So I, the other, yeah, I'm, sure. gonna, I'm not going to go too far into it, but that's fine. That's kind of... You know, and then my 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 problems really come to a head. Um, and I had a lot of like I said, like I lost some uh, really really close people to me early this year with uh, cancer. My my uncle who's only thirty nine, and then my godfather who supported me through ice hockey, living in Canada, for all my fighting stuff. So I got his uh, initials tattooed here. So um, he was a big part of it. And you know, but when he was dying of cancer, and I was in Sydney with him, um, you know what I mean? He said, "Fuck life's short, Brendan." You know, do what you love and do it till you can't do it anymore. And I was like, fuck it, you know what? <laughs> I'm not dead. I'm I'm still here. I'm still fit. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm over the bridge for a long, you know, having a longer career and maybe making any more higher steps. But I love it. I love doing it. I love training. I love competing. Like I said, I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it again. And when my body breaks down again, I can, I'll fucking hang them up again. Or if I, if I need to, maybe it won't. Maybe being upper weight class and maybe having less pressures and less of the outside noise and enjoying the process rather than sitting in the car, you know, with all the other shit going on. Now it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm where I train. I'm pretty much living in the gym. Everything's so much easier. And so all the stars align with that. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it again. Like having, you know, losing my uncle who's only two years older than me to cancer and it was within like two months. Like that was like, you know what, well, that could be me one day. You know what I mean? And then like, uh, yeah, so had to be, yeah, this shit like that happened. I was like, fuck, this is, you know, this might be a, a sign. You know, I'm not one bit religious. I don't believe in none of that shit. But I was, I was like, you know what, if, if you know, the stars have aligned, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to I'm gonna have fun doing it. I'm not going to put myself through hell trying to make it lightweight. I'm going to do it where I can enjoy every single day of training. You know, the weight cut's easy. Like I'm, I'll am you know, I was eating bacon and eggs and shit for a wrap for breakfast yesterday, and I, like I wanted all these things to work so that fighting was enjoyable again, and that's what it is, and that's why I'm excited to do it again. Um, as heavy as everything is that you just mentioned there, um, you know, all the things that you've had happen to you in such a sort of a short space of your life. Can I just ask, in terms of you moving into that next phase of your career, becoming a coach yourself? And a full-time coach and bringing through this next generation of these young fighters, has it given you kind of, I guess, a fresh perspective? You mentioned there earlier about having someone in your corner to kind of guide your way through. Is this something that now being a coach that you've got a fresh perspective on and, and it's kind of helped you kind of like sort of think this way and give you a bit more of that freedom because you've sort of seen it from both ends. You've been a fighter from one sort of side and now you're a coach, you know, kind of guiding these guys through. Has that kind of element of your life, I guess, given you kind of this, like fresher outlook on life and kind of giving you the freedom to enjoy like coming back to fighting a bit more and not fight with kind of those heavy restrictions. Yeah. I, I think that 
like um obviously having like Christian and stuff, like I always was yeah. all the things that I did wrong and did right, you know, I'd always instill in him like don't do this. Definitely don't do that. Like make, you know, this is a decision I made and this is where it took me. Don't do that. So I guess, uh, yeah, it just gave me a, like, I, I, I never really left. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I still was always, I, I didn't, I still trained every day. I was still sparring with all the guys that are fighting. You know, I was still doing a lot of work with the guys fighting and that. Um, but from uh, having the outside noise that was, that I feel, like, I, it's not that that's obviously not all of it. I just think that I, there's that element of it where it was like everything was, it was like everything was so much more stressful. So now, what I, I guess my outlook on it is enjoy the process because one day you will be my age and the process is almost over. And then it's the real world like fighting for and being able to do it every day. Obviously, it's a it's a, such a short career. So now, like, when the guys are have the fight and that and they're like they want to go on like a month off and enjoy i'm like nah i did that shit you know and then it's like every single time you're coming back to fight it's it's like you stop your whole life to for fighting you know what i mean and that puts a lot more pressure on fighting whereas in if you just enjoy the process and are just in there every day don't leave the gym for a month and party and, and then have to come back and then it's all just weight cutting and trying to get fit again I mean, so my perspective in that sense um, changed a lot as I got older because I wish I had someone to tell me, oh, what are you doing? But where I was, I was uh, uh, down south. I didn't really have a team. I had, I always had people that were helping me, but I didn't have a, a set team like we do at, at CMBT. Like we all kind of a lot more keep each other accountable and I kind of, I try to, to do the same thing. Um, so I try and tell the guys like, fuck, get as many fights as you can, especially the amateur guys, like, I'm like, fuck, if you can have 20 amateur fights and make the walk 20 times before you turn pro, you'll have none of the the anxious and nervous energy out the back. You'll have a little bit, but it's not going to be nothing like having just jumping straight into fighting pro or having two or three and going, you know, I can do it, or have two or three over the space of four or five years and then go pro and then only having, you know, you got seven fights, you got, not even 10 fights and you've been doing it for seven or eight years. I'm like, get in there and, and get in and have a crack at amateur. See if you have, see if you have, the, uh, have it in you to, to fight. And then if you do, like, the you know, all the hard work that comes in it, then, yeah, you know, then you could, you know, stay in the sport, but don't just drag it out and, and shit like that, you know? Does that make sense? Like, I'm like, my my experience from it always, like, cut out the outside noise, get as much experience as you can, fight as much as you can and enjoy the process because it's a wicked lifestyle. You know, it's an awesome lifestyle to have. When I stopped and just coach full-time, I always had, like, fuck, I want to fight again, you know what I mean? Like, I wish I, I, wish I was 10 years younger. I wish I had that time back to to do all the things I, I think about it now, turn back the clock and do all the things, that, my visions of it now and my perspective of fighting now, I wish I had it 10 years ago or, you know, whenever it was I started, like 14 years ago, whenever I started, I wish I had that same perspective or someone like me to give me that, to give me that perspective when I was younger instead of having to learn it through all the trial and errors and stuff, you know? And what's sort of the dominating feeling for you, I guess, in, in sort of that position, I guess, responsibility for, you know, these young kids' careers? Like, is it kind of like a mixed feeling of regret for parts of your career and sort of how you handle that and navigate it a bit? Like, is there like a a certain amount or like I have to imagine there's just like a massive amount of gratification for being able to pass on, I guess, that wisdom of knowledge that you gain through going through all these, you know, phases of your career the trial and error and being able to pass it on to this sort of next generation. I mean, I'm, I'm making a bit of a segue here, but you know, we talked briefly off camera before we started just about our kids. And you know, I mentioned that I've just got my firstborn there, uh, you know, who's only like close to sort of three months old. And I mean, you know, my life's taken a few sort of twists and turns and maybe mm. some things I would have loved to turn out, you know, a little bit better for myself as well. But I've kind of got this sense that, Hey, well I can guide this young bloke through and say, Hey, like yeah. you said, don't do this, sort of do this. So I'm looking forward to sort of that phase of my life. Do you like, is that sort of a similar thing for you and like your students that, you know, while you have been sort of through those trials and, you know, of your kind of your life and your career um, that at the other side of it, it, it's not all for nothing because you get to pass on these experiences. Yeah. You get, you, guys. You, get, you, get to, you get to pass it on, but you also get the, it's like you can lead a horse to water, right? That, sure. It's still that same one. It's still, and I do think that like, um, it's gonna make me real sound real old, but like the gen, like today's generation of it, like um, there's a they almost because there's a lot more of it, it's like the gym, like it's a lot more popular, right? So now all the gyms have everything. Sure. They don't have to, they don't have to outsource different areas of their game to get better. It's like you get everything in one spot. So I think it's like 
I'm trying to say you boys like get to training every day. Yeah, it's like, a different it's right. Grind. You have everything yeah, in one yeah. spot because then I, I some part of me gets frustrated. Cause I'm like, fuck, I used to drive two hours to Southside just to go to Pasha's gym. Yeah, just so I could get enough bodies to wrestle in a camp. I have to do that trip two or three times a week, and then come back to spa and or, or spa. You know, you got to go to other gyms to spa because I didn't have enough bodies. And then I think now today it's like the guys have got everything in one spot. They kind of take it for granted, and I get, I get sometimes I get a bit frustrated, and I'll say to to Miles, like, "Fuck, you know, like they need to show up, or you know, like they've got everything right here, and they're taking the piss, like, you know, that 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 side of it, you know, but." I do like I try and I try to I'm probably the worst person to pass on that information because I'm quite blunt with it. Me and me and Miles, we got a thing where it's like good cop, bad cop at the gym because I'm like fuck him, yeah, fuck him. I'm like fuck these little shits. Like don't worry about it, you know. And he's like no, no, no. Like, so it quite works, but um, part part of me just gets frustrated because I just wish that like they would see. Obviously, that you don't know what you don't know, right? So if they've never had to to make these drastic changes just to better their their career if it's already right there i guess i don't know that this is what people had to do back then so that's what yeah i started to say real old so back in my day yeah, i <laughs> mean we're the same like, age mate so you're making me feel old now too like mm. jesus christ like you know come on but yeah so it's just more like that i try you pass down the i love passing down the knowledge and that and i am um, helping the young guys especially like christian and that you know obviously i've been helping him since he was a teenager yep you know, he's 22 now and then well, he's two and old as a pro. I've been helping him for years and years, you know, like so he kind of it takes the advice, but because he he had to travel with me to all these training sessions, yeah. you know, I'd pick him up and drive him with me to Brisbane and the Gold Coast and that. So he kind of understands it, but part of me gets frustrated a lot when people are just, you know, it's right there for them. They're not making the most of them. Like, fuck, I wish I had this when I was your age. I think you actually you know, reached out to, um, to I, I did a podcast a long time ago and then I just sort of think about it. I think you maybe spoke to Daryl Martin, who I did a podcast with, because he came on and he said, I, I have to give a shout out for a, and, he, and this was before kind of Christian made his pro debut quite a few yeah. days before it. He's like, I've got to give a shout out for uh, White Lightning, Christian Lapham. Christian Lapham. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. And I'm like, I think I've heard of Christian. Like, you know, and started sort of looking into him. And now and now we've got Christian Lapham. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir. In, it's like, good fucking call. Like, Christian yeah. Lapham, like. I mean, that uh, that last uh, Christian's last fight was uh, that's Daryl come up to me and goes, "Fuck, you remember when I talk, remember when I get you said to give yeah. the shout out? You remember yeah. that time? I was like, oh, I can remember. I think about too many knocks to the head, but <laughs> I do now. Yes, no, that that was definitely a good call. I mean, uh, like, and, and specifically for Christian, I mean, you just, <coughs> you just talk about these guys and trying to keep them on the straight and narrow. But like, you know, Christian, in particular, the student, like, seeing his sort of start to his career, like, how gratifying has it been? I guess for you to see him get off to such a hot start. No, nah, it's unreal. It's, uh, I always knew the um, potential was there, but I was a, uh, I kind of held him back a little bit. He probably could have went pro a bit earlier, but I was like, you know what, this, and he and he was, uh, he probably would have went earlier, and then he lost the fight down in Torquay against a really good grappler. Um, I think he's an Irish fella, like a judo fella, okay. um, down at Salt Fight Series. Um, he, he lost the fight against him, and then so we put we made him fight again after that. But he's um he's good, bro. Like he doesn't um like the last two fights. Like funny enough, like, he doesn't make it, never makes excuses. Nothing right. A broken thumb before the last fight. Uh, crooked. Like the one before that, he was in bed all week with the flu, leading into it. Got out of bed, weighed in, back in bed with the sick. Got out of bed, had a three round clinic. Didn't do anything afterwards. He comes straight home because he lives with me. Comes straight home. We we're all having drinks, and he's he's he was eating his uh leftover weight uh, reload meals and went to bed. Went to work the next morning. Sick. I was like, like, like it's you're, you're like I'm proud of him in that. Like he. When he says he's doing something, he's gonna do it. Um, and then like the last fight, same thing. Like he had a, his thumb was fucked the whole camp. It turns out it ended up being broken. And he needed surgery on it. Still fought for three rounds against um, that honey honey bear fella who's fucking tough. Like he Maybe hit him with hard. everything. Christian yeah. had a dent in. He still got a dent in his shin from the guy's head. Yeah. Like uh, you know, but same thing. Like broken thumb. Could be like pretty like he, he didn't have the great greatest camp with it, and still went you know put on a dominant fifteen minutes. So he's like he's fought two really really tough guys in his first two pro fights, and he's not had the greatest camp. But all adversity aside, he's still put on, I think, fucking good performances under the circumstances, which no one would know. He would never tell no one. I'm probably the first person telling anyone that it was even the case that he was had the flu and was in bed all week and that locked himself in his room. But he never doesn't make any excuses. Like, Fuck, I'll go out there. I'm going to beat him. Fuck he it. doesn't strike me as that kind of guy that wants to tell everyone about his problems. Like, cause I obviously had him on the podcast and everything. Yeah. And he just, he seems like he's just quietly sort of in his own world. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to yeah, do well, my thing and that sort of thing. So. We're, we're, uh, we're slowly getting a bit more vocal with it. Cause uh, he, he, 
He's getting better on the mic after the fights. I don't know if you've seen it, but he's getting better. But uh, I think he's great. He's a, he's a man. He used to be a man of few words, like to get him to do the podcast. And he's like, oh, I was like, yeah. I social media. We had to start his social media for him. Oh, that, we got to get that going. He's got to start getting more on Instagram. But I mean, like, I think we spoke from memory when I, when I talked to him just after the podcast and you were sort of a bit like, oh, I don't know if I like, did I speak well enough? Did I say well enough? I'm like, I think you're great because like you just you just say what you mean. Like you don't you yeah. don't have to like if you don't want to, you don't have to necessarily over promote yourself. Like you just and you don't try to say things that you think people want to hear. Like he he does have a natural ability to do it. And he's not nervous or anything like that. He's yeah. just like his own guy. So I, I think there's just so much there to kind of work with. But yeah, yeah, get the Instagram going because he's got to start. Yeah, no, we I can't uh, have we more had, Instagram had to, followers than Christian start Lappin for Christ's sake. Like I don't know if that's still the case, but I checked him one time. Like that can't be fucking happening. I'm, like, I'm not anyone. There's gonna be a, this guy's gonna be a someone. So let's go. Yeah, no, we had we had to we had to force him to to get it going and to get some uh just to get some content for him that because he's just like ah I just want to fight. I don't want to do any of this stuff. I was on fire. I said yeah, but you want to make the UFC and this, they're gonna you need to have you know you need to have some exposure out there and. So I helped him. Up, um, that's another thing, like helping out with. Like it took me many, many years to work out how to make money from the sport. Yep. And even at this level, I still, may, I, I've still have managed to do it. And I've opened a gym. The I was, I, I'm not. I'm still director of the gym now, but I'm obviously not working there because it's down south. But you know, I still opened a gym with this money made from the sport. I've travelled all around the world. You know, I'm still, I'm still living from coaching and fighting now. So. From sponsorship, from you know, you got to find the right people and the right people that support you and and, and get a good team behind you. So I kind of helped him with that too. So you know, a lot of people they go, oh, you know, you make any money from it? And oh, Christian's all right. He made his first two fights as a, as a pro. He made bank. He made he made more money from sponsors than he made from from the fight. There you go. You know what I mean? So because he because li- he listens and you try and you know steer him in the right direction and you can you can do it right. So he, he's doing fine with it. He listens. He listens about. He listens for fighting. He follows instructions in and out of the gym. So you can't complain with that. So now we just got to get him sorted with this uh, social media and get him in the uh, get him uh, two get him a couple more wins. Get him a couple of finishes. Hopefully he has uh, some uh, better luck with his with his uh, like with his body. You know what I mean? Like doing little niggles. You know the flu and the, and the thumb. Hopefully he has more luck in the next couple of camps and he goes out and gets some finishes. Hopefully Cam doesn't um, match him up with just. Fucking two of the toughest dudes in Australia, New Zealand next time. I mean, like, you know, he's already showing so much potential, man. I mean, from that first fight, from his pro debut, like, there's something special on his hands. But, yeah, we've got to remind him that they don't have, like, sponsorship opportunities from the shorts of the UFC. So we've got to get the, uh, we've got to get the promotion going and make some money on the side. So, yeah, definitely definitely guide him on that side there. But um, so many good things happening out of CMBT, of course. Like, so many... Fighters, I mean, on this massive week in a car. I think we got, I think we got ten or something. There yeah, might be ten guys on the. We got. I think we have six on. We think we have four, four on the main card on Friday night, and then I yeah. think we have, a, and then another. We got a, uh, a Japanese fellow fighting for the title on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, you're rolling deep. Odin must get obviously yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then Osh is uh, Osh is uh, heavyweight coming yeah. in. That should be that should be fireworks. So, oh, uh, I'm feeling I don't get. I usually get to be the one watching from the corner, but. I won't get to see these ones this time. I'm spewing that I because I did a podcast with Odin Musket before he was supposed to have his last fight, and unfortunately that fell through. And I'm I'm really sad that the uh, you know the community didn't get to see him um, speak in that interview because I just think he's just another really interesting cat too, and just uh, such a bright future and that sort of thing. I mean, people get to see a live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass when he shows off with these instead of his words. But yeah. um, I'm definitely keen to get him back and uh, and and show off just who he sort of is as a person too. So. Well, uh, there's not many. Uh, I don't think there's many flyweights in Australia or even around the world that is sleeping people. <sighs> oh my god! As quick as he, as quick as he sleeps people. Yeah. That's a as a weight class where there's knockouts are few and far, right? And and it's like this new generation of flyweights coming through now that just have this pair in their hands because, like, I mean, we almost lost that division in the UFC like ages ago yeah. because it was just you know they're fighting they're just fighting to decision that sort of thing. There's no knockouts, and I mean, then you just got these guys that are. Doing that, and I mean, he's part of the new, new breed of guys. Yeah, yeah, the young, the young guys. So yeah, yeah. It, um, it's uh, very, it's, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's few and far between when you get someone of that weight class that's just putting people out cold, like folding them with in both half. Both hands, so. man. With both hands. Yeah, like, crazy. Yeah, he's got a bit. He has, he has definitely has, a, he definitely has a bright future if he stays. If he just stays the course, you know what I mean? Like keeps his keeps his uh, head down, ass up, and stays in the gym. I, I think he, I think he'll make the UFC. No, like he'll have no troubles there. He's just got to, uh, you got to get him some blinkers. Yeah. Keep him I, focused. I think he knows that because uh, we'll, like one thing he did say from memory when I had him on is that he, 
he likes the person who he is when he focuses on putting himself into the gym. He didn't over elaborate or anything like that. Yeah. Like he sort of alluded to, he's like, oh, you know, if I kind of, if I slack off and I'm, I'm, I'm not kind of grinding the gym, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a different person. So I like who I am when I'm locked in and I'm training like that. And, and he made no secret that he's proud of himself when he does that sort of thing. So uh, <coughs> it's, it's a cool thing. Not that I've ever met him or even spoken to him prior to that, but it's like, I'm already proud of him. The fact that he's just, yeah. he's already making these, like well, you, these observations at such a young age. Well, you hear, uh, you, well, you obviously speak to enough fighters and that you hear that it probably is, it's, it's probably pretty similar with a lot of guys. Like, you know, we got um, Reese McLaren at our gym too, right? And he's got his one championship for one, yeah, one championship yeah. fight coming up the weekend after Eternal. Mm -hmm. And even he says the same thing. Like, he's a, it's just, you know, like, I think it's a, maybe that's the, what makes people, maybe it makes the guys uh, that fight good at fighting. Maybe it's the, that chaotic. You know, it's that little that devil on one shoulder, you know? Like yeah. it's, and you can if see you're not, that if you're not it's fully awkward. doing it, yeah. you're 100% yeah. you're somewhere else. you got to be 100% in, but usually yeah. the guys, you see them, right? That's, a, that's the, a lot of the successful guys say the same thing, right? Outside of fighting, it's chaos. But when they're locked in, once they, once they sign the dotted line, their life becomes, you know, more streamlined and the blinkers go on and they focus on the fight. And then once the fight's over, they fall off. So that's... That's one thing, I, like I said before, about if there was one thing I could, that another, like a message for younger guys would be like, don't fall off because the, the career, like, the lifespan of your career is so short that yeah. a month here and a month there of fucking around, like I did it, and then at the end of it, you'll lose so much time. You know, that's time where you could be fighting, that's getting closer to whether it's, you know, the UFC, the other bigger promotions, it could be whatever, whatever your goal is, the the time you spend away celebrating the small wins is going to take away from the big win at the end. Right. So as if they can all get their, have blinkers on. And I wish, like I said, I wish I had someone who's like, Oh, you pull your head in, get back in the gym on Tuesday after you fight on the Saturday, even if it's on the bike. Cause as soon as you don't go back in for the week and then that week turns to two and that week turns to a month and then you, you drag your ass back in there feeling like shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like, I can't remember the old saying, but it's something like, like, today's grind is like tomorrow's reward or something like that. Like, it's just yeah, such yeah. A, a sort of a true sentiment. So, yeah, yeah. You're responsible yeah, all those, uh, yeah. those, say those sayings were plucked out of thin air. That's it. That's it. There's definitely merit behind each one of those sayings like that. Um, I did a podcast. Uh, I did a couple, actually, um, but with Matt Bones Williams, of course, he does the commentary for Eternal MMA. Um, a, I mean, we talked about it a lot. We were uh, glazing quite heavily over uh, Odin Muscat on the last one that we did last night that will go up on YouTube this weekend. Uh, but one of the observations he made uh, just in terms of talking about your fight coming up with David Martinez is obviously the fact that um, you, you've stepped in and into this coaching role. Um, and, and he said for a lot of guys like that do step into these coaching roles, uh, it gives you like – sort of a whole new perspective on sort of the fight game. And he said for himself that since he did it and became a coach, it just leveled up his skills like tenfold compared to when he was just training as a fighter. Is that something that like when you, as you kind of make your return to the cage, like, and being a coach, like and focusing primarily sort of on that for the last few years, do you share that kind of sentiment that from seeing it from the other side, that it's kind of like added, I guess, even further to your development at this point in your fight career? Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, uh, you know, the way I see it is um, when you're always just training for fights, and like this goes back before about like uh, after your fight, getting back in the gym. If you just go back after and then you're just always in fight camp, you're never actually slowing down to get better. You're never upgrading upgrading the toolbox. It's like constantly going back in there and, and then it's get fit, do the fight camp and fight. Yeah. So what I found is having the time off and coaching was ha having to um, structure classes, help the fighters, help with – Help, help more so with their game plans and stuff, really breaking down fights, breaking down other fighters, then breaking down my own techniques as well. When I'm, when I'm coaching, you start to, you start to break down movements and, and techniques to much smaller movements, you know, and then you might have someone who's really good learner and someone who's not so good at learning. So, you know, you might give it instructions this way, then you've got to work out a way you can give the same instruction to get the same result, but in a way that, you know, this person, this person can understand. You know, same as fighters. I like know everyone's going to have the same response. Not everyone, you know, not everyone's going to be visual. You know, you might you might have to break things down into smaller segments for them to understand the the technique or the footwork, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So I think I, I've had to deconstruct my own knowledge of fighting to be able to um, give it to other people in a way that so many different people can understand. 
where before it was just me taking how I knew I learned, I would just take it in. And then I didn't really have to, I, I still was coaching a little bit here and there and helping Christian that, but I didn't have to worry so much about trying to help a, such a large variety of different people. You know I mean, I was, I was always just like, this is how I learn. This is how I'm going to do it. This is the technique I do. And this is how I do it. But now it's like, this is how I do it. And then I've got to reteach how I do it. And if they're not picking it up, you've got to re- really deconstruct it and put it back together in a way that everyone can understand that across the board. I think that's, that's definitely made, it's, it's slowed me down a bit and definitely made me probably like, uh, definitely, I, I think definitely better technically wise. And I, I just think that I've uh, had to, like I said, had to deconstruct it so much to, to feed it back out that it's made me better because as you're teaching it, you're constantly relearning it. And then when they ask questions like, oh, why do you do this? And you're like, oh, well, that's why I do this. You know what I mean? You, it's, they're kind of learning as well. They're making you break it down even more. Yeah. And I think that's been a massive change for me. Uh, is it hard like splitting your time? Because obviously you're, you're making a return at Eternal 90. Uh, you know, you, you started obviously – if you go back to the kind of the start of your professional career and everything and your training like solely for your own fights and that sort of thing, like you're getting coached. And, and then I guess you kind of moved in that sort of second phase where you're, you're kind of fighting and you're coaching as well. And you moved into this kind of full-time role as a coach. But now, now that you're coming back to fight, is it hard to kind of split the time? Like, is it, is it, you have to manage it in a different way where you're trying to be a coach at the same time as like training for your own fights? Like how, how do you kind of balance that? And, and is it a hard thing to do? No, I, I think because, because I was coaching and still training, like still training the same, like still sparring, still going to other classes. I would, t- you know, coach a class, then jump in on the class, or I would jump in on the sparring, and then you know, I, I don't think, like I don't think much had changed. I think because it was quite an easy transition. Like I said, the stars just aligned themselves. It was not like I had to change anything to fight, and that was the one thing when I spoke to to Miles about about fighting again. It was more, it was not like, well, I've got to stop doing this, 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 and this to do it. I was like, you know what? I'm not changing anything to for, to come back to fighting. I'm going to do everything I do now, and I'm, but I'm just going to train for a fight. Like my camp's, my camp's slightly different, obviously being older and that, like, and having injuries. And then so monitoring that was different. Like I'm not in, I'm not doing three hard sessions a day, or I'm not in the gym for two hours doing like a striking class, then straight into wrestling, or my sessions are much shorter. A lot more focus on recovery and, and rest than what it was before. And like I said, not doing the driving. So I'm not yeah. in the car for, for four hours, five hours a day driving. Like I get to actually, I can coach, then train, then I'm home for a few hours. I'm home for the whole middle of the day. And then I'm back in the gym till eight o'clock at night. Then I'm back home, at, I'm at home by eight, you know, no later than, you know, eight, 15. And then I, you know what I mean? So it's this, it was an easy transition. It wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, like I said, it wasn't, I had to change nothing. I just was like, you know what, this is, I've, I, this is what I want to do. The opportunity's there. Let's do it. And I, I even said, I was like, look, if I've got to change anything, if I've got to be in the gym, killing myself every day to fight, like obviously I, I do all the work, but I'm not going to be in there for four hours a day killing myself, doing two hours in the morning, two hours at night. But my days of doing that shit is well gone. And I leave that for the young kids with all the energy. I'm just going to go in there and get the work I need done. I'm going to coach. I'm going to go in there and work on what I need to work on. Short and sweet, in and out. Perfect. Uh, this fight is, as we said at the top of the show, this is uh, up at welterweight, not going to uh, try to cut weight down to lightweight anymore. But did you really fight down as low as featherweight back in like 2014? Did you fight? No, nah, I, I think that's no, I think that's, that's a typo. Really? No God, way. Man. I fucking, there's no way I made that. I thought. I was I actually, like looking at that. I'm like, that's. That can't be right. No, nah, I think it's right. a, I think it's a mistake on Sherdog. I think, but um, okay. the lightest I ever got was seventy. I never, I've never even seen. I don't remember the last time. I would have been a young teenager when there was, I was a six. Say, I want to see a photo at when the, you the were first number on the like, scale. Oh man, like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. No, nah, when I was like when I was like to put it in perspective, like when I was fighting at lightweight at this point. So what are we a week? We're seven days out. I would be like 82, 83 kilos still. You know what I mean? So, and then working my way down by the start of start of fight week, yeah, I'd be like eighty two, maybe eighty one if I was lucky, if I if I really did well. By the time by the day before weigh in, I'm I was still like 76, 77 kilos, and then I'd have to cut you know that six or seven kilos overnight and in the morning before I get on the scales. Where now it's like I'm walking around like eighty eight, 
kind of thing. So it's still, you know, it's still, uh, what's that, 11 kilos over. But I'm more like now, I'm like, 80, I'm like 83 kilos now. Yeah, so much closer. You know, a week out. Yeah. So it's going to, yeah. I, and just like, like I said, no stress and that involved. I'm not having it to watch every little thing I eat. Like I am eat what I want. I have ice cream every night, chocolate. And the weight's gonna, and the weight will come off. I'm not gonna kill myself to get make the weight. And I said, like I said before, I'm not. I wasn't gonna change shit to come back to like. As long as I could still enjoy life, then fighting was. I'll come back and I could do it like I am now. But if it meant I had to change heaps of shit, like trained another two hours a day and I had to count every single grain of rice I had, I was like, fuck that. I'll just stick to coaching. It, it sort of almost reminds me of, um, you know, like when fighters like kind of take like a short notice fight like, and just come in, they haven't sort of been in camp, but it's kind of like, uh, there's the kind of the downside of not having a full camp, but then it's sort of this upside of like, not just like putting yourself through this mental grind. It's almost like this kind of like freeing feeling, like you get to still like eat the way you kind of want to eat and that sort of thing and just come in feeling comfortable. You know, you haven't sort of like grinded yourself to the bone like that. That's got to have like some positive <coughs> surely as well. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And yeah, look, be, just being able to, finish training, shoot home, kick your feet up, eat, eat what you want. And there's gyms right there, like all that, you know, like the, it's just so much easier. Like I honestly, I wish I had done it 10 years ago. That's only, like, if I had the opportunity, if the gym that I'm at now existed 10 years ago and I had the opportunity to move, I wish I had, I wish I had done it. It would have been like my, no, no, like I'm not saying it would be much different maybe, but uh, potentially my career could have went in a different a different uh a different way you know went down a different route you know um because it's just way easier now like this camp's been unreal because i'm just i've not had zero stress i have not to worry about it there's no pressure there's nothing you know even having the pressure of like oh if you if i lose i'm i'm four fights backwards now one loss is four fights backwards you know for, for me now it's like Obviously, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't want to win. But I'm doing it now because it's enjoyable. Sure. The pressure's not there. I'm not starving myself. I'm not having to leave the country or travel in the car five hours a day. It's all. It's all right here, and it and it wasn't. It wasn't a hard decision to make. Like you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna fight again. With, with that kind of like free feeling that you have, like coming back, um, obviously fighting against David Martinez, and there's obviously a few things different here. A, we mentioned obviously the difference in the weight. You guys have obviously already fought the first contest, went the way of David. Um, Obviously, David's had trouble making lightweight and that sort of thing, hence why he's up at welterweight. You know, you don't want to put yourself through this to kind of cut down to welterweight as well. With the kind of the freeing feeling that you've got now coming back at this weight class and not thinking about, you know, potential wins and loss and that sort of thing, is that sort of factored into, like, your thinking in terms of matching up with David as an opponent? Like, does that mean, like, you're not thinking about this fight even as, like, oh, I get to get this one back kind of thing because, you know, I had the sort of the loss. Is it just, like... Uh, it's a fight that makes sense, or does that part kind of excite you to kind of get one back at all, or is it do those kind oh, of? Oh, is that, def- that was definitely a contributing okay. factor to take. Yeah. That was definitely a contributing factor to taking. It was like, oh, he he won the first one, like yeah, have an opportunity okay. to try and get it back. You know what I mean? But the pressure of the first one was for the title. Yeah. You know, I need to put wins together. I was running out of time. Father time was catching up real quick. Body was shutting down. I was putting heaps of pressure on myself. You know, and this one was more like, you know what, fuck, we can just do it. We can just fight and go 15 minutes and then I just, I can drive back to my house, kick my feet up and it's just another day where, you know, before I would put so much pressure on it. It was like, honestly, it was like my world had to stop for a fight camp. You know, and, and I think that pressure sort of weighs heavy on people. But definitely did for me. I, I can't speak for anyone else, but it definitely did for me. Um, and not, I've had none of, none of that this time, like, it's still obviously anyone who says they don't get nervous for fights, I reckon they're talking shit. Everyone, everyone gets nervous. Like everyone, still you still got to go and perform. You're still going out there and going to hurt each other. But I think the having not having the pressure of the outcome, pressure of the outcome, pressure of the weight cut, you know all that shit. When you don't, when I now I've got rid of that, I think it's just been that much more enjoyable. Like I, I said to Miles, I said, "Fuck, if this is it, I could have. If it, every camp could be like this, I could get ten more out." You know, if if my body would hold up, because it's, you know, not having to put everything on hold is a bit unreel. Nothing, to, no, honestly, nothing changes. It feels like, like it doesn't feel like it's a week out from fighting. Normally, I'd be looking like a prisoner of war and feeling like shit and hating life. Can't waste away in and fight, and then you know, I don't have any of that now. I mean, there's got to be some kind of benefit to kind of having an edge 
though, right? I mean, because you just said like you don't have like kind of any of those stresses of, you know, wins and losses and that sort of thing. Like I don't kind of have to worry necessarily about the, the consequences in terms of a record. Uh, but, you know, maybe that kind of part is important in terms of like, all right, th- this is something you can at least focus on is, all right, getting one back over Martinez is kind of just at least that edge that you kind of have because uh, you, you talk about maybe fighters that are kind of going into retirement and they kind of get that kind of freedom of, um, you know, oh, it doesn't matter anymore and that sort of thing. And a lot of those fighters that come in, they don't win their retirement fights because they've just, they've, they don't have that kind of thing that they just got to kind of grind themselves into. So, like, do, do you think it's important to kind of at least have that edge to take into the fight that it's at least like, all right, at least I can square one up with Martinez and, that, and that's kind of what I need in part to kind of really, like, get me going for this one. Albeit, you're obviously very excited for the return. Yeah, that's... That's what, I said, like, that's what I was saying before about um that like the matchup obviously had to make sense. Yeah, you know I was gonna come I, I was gonna come back and you know fight some twenty two year old up and comer that not really doesn't really have like it just doesn't it just wouldn't have made um it just well, I guess wouldn't have made sense to not not to not to feel like oh you'd be a stepping stone or, or something for them it's like. This wouldn't have got me out of bed to do it, yeah. Like to put the extra work in, or because obviously saying that it's obviously um, it's been less stressful, less pressure. I've still obviously upped all the work rate and everything because I yeah. know that I've had, you know, I've been training for it for ten weeks, so it's not like I didn't know like it was. Uh, I've been lazy sitting back doing nothing. I've still obviously upped it to a fight camp level, but I've just been smarter with it. Sure. But the opponent, the, definitely the opponent was a big part when I spoke to Cam about it and that as well, because obviously we we. Obviously, being in the corner and, and obviously always a bit training and, and he obviously sees that and he's like, he always like would put the bait out there like, oh, you know, sure, you sure. And then, but it had to, had to make sense. And like you said, uh, Dave beat me the first time. You know, I was doing good on the feet. He did, got, got me on the ground, got a, got a finish. I want to get it back. And, that, and that's the fun part is obviously I can try and get that, that loss back. And that's got, that excites me to do that. And that that's why the matchup made sense, as opposed to some random that that no, I like I barely know or no one really knows. Or yeah. you know, Dave's been around forever. I've been around forever. He has a win over me, weight class below. We'll do it again there and see what happens. Uh, Have do fun you, doing it. Do you think like in terms of we talked a little bit about early in terms of just your kind of um the evolution of your game through being a coach and everything and obviously you're you right so you know exactly how much you've changed and sort of the levels that you've kind of made you know through your career and then sort of through the time off and through kind of coaching and everything can you i don't know how much you would sort of look at david in terms of his evolution and his growth through the kind of the gap between you when you fought and he's obviously continued fighting like do you sort of notice it like the differences I don't know if you've looked at David necessarily or how much you kind of study him for this fight, but like, do you kind of see the differences in his game? And is there anything that you can kind of point to where you think like that's something that he sort of noticeably leveled up, I guess, and that you kind of have to pay attention to, or do you think there's not a massive difference between the last time when you fought? Like, what do you sort of think in terms of the matchup between then and what it is now? Uh, I think, oh, I, oh, he would have leveled up. Like, obviously, I, like I said, I trained with him in that too. Yeah. Like we're down at uh, in Wollongong, we trained and I helped him out with a few things there, and obviously because I when that was when I was retired and that and like I, I would I was ha- and obviously I was happy to help him, like and I would still would be happy to help him. That's, that doesn't change anything. Like I said, Dave's a good dude, um, and I would hope that he would evolve because well, if you're not evolving, right, what's the point of doing it? If you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're gonna get stale with it, then obviously you got to change up something. And he, I know he's been going to like Compton's other gyms. Compton's an unreal gym. I trained out there for uh, like a fair while as well when I had like I had to find gyms. Um, you know, so I would hope that training there with Stephen Elliott and that that he would level up. They got heaps of good guys there. You know, his team's always been good. He's been doing he's been doing camps down with Volk. He's been you know like he's had heaps of good, he's had heaps of good matchups that he's won. Um, but yeah, like it's not, it's not even that about his evolution or my evolution. I was like, the, I just the opportunity was there, the stars aligned. I was like, fuck, I'll get, I'll, I'll get that. I'll have that. I'll take the fight. Um, you know, we'll have a rematch and see if we can uh, level the score. Um, you've always been known, obviously, as a fighter. You know, with incredibly diverse skill set, you know, blending elite level technique, power, speed, like you've given eternal fans, like, you know, so many cool moments kind of over the years. Um, you know, those back-to-back KO wins that you had over Ben Wall um, and Greg Zori as well. The latter, obviously that spinning heel kick uh, to the head that we just, we, we see play on the eternal promos and everything like over and over again. 
um, you know, so many magic moments, like, you know, and even like in the, in the wins and I mean, the losses, there's just been so many fantastic performances. Like you can watch any number of your fights and just have so much to point to, um, to enjoy or sort of learn from like, when you sort of look back on those parts of your career, like, is there any like particular fight or any performance you've enjoyed or anything that you've just kind of, you can kind of point to that's been a, a particular standout for you, um, you know, through your journeys in mixed martial artists? No, I always just go. I always just try and be as just go and be as exciting as possible. Just trying to have fun with it. But uh, I don't really. I always you always have a game plan, and I always I've always focused on like to obviously taking it serious and focus on uh, on like a game plan. And I want to stack the chips in my corner to have the the best opportunity to to be successful when I fight. Right, but at the end of the day, it's an entertainment business. Like when you, no one wants to see two people. You know, hug, like hold on to each other for fifteen minutes. <laughs> like I don't have any. I, I don't even have a desire to to fight that way. You know, maybe if I had to be, maybe if I had to be more focused on fighting like that. Maybe being more, being safer. You know, I'm not. This is not who I am. I, I would rather. I'd rather get some. Have a fancy knockout or. Have a heap of good highlights. I don't know, even you know, when I, as long as I've got some good highlights, even on the losses, I think I still have some good highlights on fights I've lost. You know, like that, and that's to me, especially now. I reckon that's pretty cool. Like my kids will be able to, you know, my my daughter, my daughter who is ten. When she comes to me, she was like, "Dad, my friends Google searched your name and they seen you do a, a big jump and knockout and." Your dad's an MMA fighter now. Like that's pretty cool as it is. That's very cool. Like that's a, that's pretty cool to have. So I think you know, like I just I'll just rather be exciting and fun. And I think I've done that. I think I've, you know, the the knockouts and uh, and the highlights. And I think I've succeeded at enjoying it when I do it. Um, I would hope that no one, well, I would hope that no one would say that Brenton's in a boring fight or I made it boring. Now I've definitely been I've definitely been involved in a boring fight. Sure. But I was I, I don't I would not I like to think I wasn't the instigator of the I don't, boredom. I don't think the sentence has been spoken yet. You're probably the first one that was Brenton made a boring fight. So I think that's the first time it's been said for sure. Yeah. So and it is you know what when when it's all said and done, I will definitely hold my head high knowing that when I did fight that I would that well I think and from what other people around me say that it's enjoyable to watch. That's not it's not boring. You, you can always it's like it's gonna be exciting. There's going to be maybe flashy stuff. There's going to be, it's not going to be, I'm going to hold someone down for 15 minutes and try and edge out a win that way. That's for sure. Uh, this is obviously the first time that we've spoken on the podcast. Um, and so I could be wrong, but you don't strike me as a man that makes predictions, but I'm happy for you to prove me wrong. If you think the fight's going to go a certain way or do you just, maybe for this one, it's a little bit different because it's your return fight. Is it just, we're not doing anything in terms of predicting the way the fight's going to go. It's just, we're going to go in there mm. and do our thing. Like, what do you, what do you think? Oh, oh I think it's, I think it's, uh, well, I, and, unless he comes with the, and surprises me, I think we both know our path to victory. I think anyone who watched us fight the first time, anyone who watched us fight before and after that and watched Dave still fighting when I've been sitting on the couch, I think they, we, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out what I need to do and what he has to do. You know what I mean, so, yeah, there's a there's not really a prediction. It's like well, that's it's, it's fights can is going to go. I think one of one of two ways, you know. So he's either going to be successful with his game plan, or I'm going to be successful with mine. But either way, I think um, Dave's not really in boring fights either. So I think either way, it's going to be it'll be exciting. No, I mean, for, it's a- if, if, if for as long as it lasts, if it lasts fifteen, if it lasts fifteen seconds, I think it'll be exciting. It's at the top of the billing uh, for more reasons than one. It's because yeah, you're right. I mean. You don't make boring fights. Uh, yeah, David, even for his style, like he's not typically in boring fights either. Like you guys both kind of bring it. So it's uh, on a long list of fights that are on this card, on both cards, mind you, across Eternal 90 and across Eternal 91. It's just one of the most incredible ways to cap off a year uh, for local mixed martial arts that I could ever think of. Um, and you coming back and being a part of that, uh, it's just such a cool thing like to see everything that you've kind of done through your career, moving to the next phase, um, as a coach, and then and coming back and doing this again uh, on the last cards of the year uh, on just one of the biggest stages is just one of the coolest things that I could kind of think of. Um, one more before I let you go too, man. Like just in terms of this being your return and coming back for this fight, have you kind of given much thought in terms of maybe what you kind of want to do next? Like is there a plan to kind of to keep going at it 
Or are you kind of thinking we'll just take it one fight at a time? Is it just we're doing one and done? Or is it maybe you're keeping it close to your chest? Like, is there anything you can share in terms of what you're thinking, um, you know, might sort of come next in 2025? Yeah, like I was saying before, if uh, if all my camps could run as smooth as this one did, I, I would I would have another 10. <laughs> you know, but it's just, it just depends. I, I'm not – I think um, – Setting setting though setting that goal where I'm at in in my career in my life I think setting those goals is quite unrealistic because obviously things can change so quick right and and I've already dedicated so much of my life to the sport and still do um, and and like I said I'm enjoy I'm enjoying it so if it, no matter how no matter how this one goes and depending how I pull up and that you know there could be three more next year. Like, okay, or this might be one and done. Like, I, I don't need, I couldn't give you the answer because I don't know myself. I, I'm just enjoying it again. So I'm been loving training, like just enjoying the whole process again. I, and I think I lost that spark near the end last time with everything going on. I think I lost that and it no longer was enjoyable. It, it really become like, it was like a chore, a proper job. I was like, fuck, this is not why I, this is not why I did this. You know, the, and so now I, and without all that, now it feels like none of that pressure and now I'm enjoying it. I think it's gonna be more. I think I, I'm would more exciting when I fight too because I don't have that pressure weighing on me now. I just go out and have fun, and if it, it no matter how the result goes, I go and have fun. It doesn't change my life. You know, I'm not gonna wake up on this on the Saturday morning and be like, oh fuck, I'm not gonna make the UFC now. I can't do this. I can't do that. That's not that's not even there, anyways. I just get to go out there and throw hands and knees and elbows and hopefully cut some people and have drinks after and wake up the next day and do the same shit I do every other day. I love it, man. I mean, why look too far past next weekend, right? I mean, when I say next weekend, we're like, what, barely like six or seven days away from yeah. uh, finishing up the year with Brent Mumford versus David Martinez for the second time atop an absolutely stacked Eternal 90 card right before we have Eternal 91. Um, this has been an absolute treat having you here, man, talking to you for the first time. I absolutely love this conversation. Great insight. Uh, it's uh, a lot of people very thrilled to have you back. So many people in this community that are familiar with yourself and uh, have followed your career. Uh, this is a real treat. Um, I'm going to be up there myself, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in your return. Um, it's incredible, man. Uh, all the best for Eternal 90, and uh, we'll see you on the other side, man. Hopefully for yourself, uh, it's going to be a win, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about it after you're done. I uh, can't wait for this one. Thanks for coming on. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. 